it's Wendy. Today I'm so today I'm going to do a little lesson on compass on compasses. So what type of compass you might want to purchase, the difference between good ones and uh, ones that are really cheap. And that'll be pretty quick. I'll come, I'm going to kind of show you how to draw a flower of life with a with a compass. And then after about I don't know, maybe seven minutes, 10 minutes at the most of this. At the very end of this video, I'm gonna take you through a stack of my artwork, uh, my watercolor mandalas that I've drawn with a compass. So that'll be kind of like a fun show and tell at the end if you'd like to stay around for that. So let's get started. So what you're looking at here is um, my compass selection that I've literally had for years. Um, let's see. I've been doing artwork for probably 40 years, and when I was in high school, I purchased this compass right here. So, you know, giving away my age, <laughs> but this is going back about 40 years. So I don't think you can even get this one anymore. It's a C-H-A-R-V-O-Z, Charvoz, Germany, 10-3832. I love it. So before I get to that one, I'm going to tell you the ones that I don't love so much, but that are useful to have around. Uh, this compass, I don't even know how I acquired it. Uh, it has flexible legs. It's made out of metal. It's not as heavy as my Charvo compass. It's got the plastic top. Um, it still works great. It's nice and smooth. It's bigger than my Charvo. I don't really need a compass this big. So based on what you need, like this compass will draw up to 10 inches. I don't usually go much bigger than that. And if I do, I have an extender arm, which works just fine on this. So these bigger compasses, I mean, unless you've got a specific purpose for them, uh, I would skip it. So that's kind of just showing you skip that one. And you can see in comparison, my Charbo is about six inches. Um, this one is a little bit longer, maybe seven. And then these guys are ones that we all had when we were in um, geometry, right? Which you either loved or hated. And <laughs> I struggled with geometry, but I love to draw mandalas. <laughs> so um, these work just fine. I mean, they're your basic, you know, metal compass. You put your pencil in, let's see, like that. Actually, it's really not that complicated. You just stick, it, stick your pencil in and then you lock it down and then you've got your, your pencil that you can, you know, draw with and you can like adjust the height. You want your lead at the same height as the point. And then you can just, you know, draw, draw your circle. I don't prefer these. I mean, you can already see as I'm drawing because they slip. They're not, um, they're slippery. You could tape it. These work just fine if you don't want to spend a lot of money. I think you can get them at the drugstore for like a buck or something. So those work fine if you really want to mess with it, hold it in place. But you know, do you see how my circles just overlapped? Unless you tape it, you are not going to get a good draw with one of these. But they're fun to have around if you just don't want to invest the money in one of these. So that's that. This is just another type. This is like probably from high school, probably 40 years old too. Designed a little bit better. It's actually stiffer. You know what? I might have gotten this one. New York. I might have gotten this one from my grandpa. This one might actually be like 100 years old. So go figure. Built better. And look at this one is nice and stiff. It's holding its shape. Hey, there we go. I haven't actually used it in years. <laughs> I'm gonna have to put that in my use pile. So I did take a quick look on eBay and I noticed that you can purchase these older compasses on eBay. Um, you can even purchase one like I have on eBay. So if you wanna hunt, you can do that and you're welcome to. So that's just sort of going through what I have and I'll push these aside. And now let's take a look at my Charvo. So usually a good compass will come in a set and it will have, it will be metal, it will be heavy, 
it will have an adjustable um, leg here which you can um, pull off and put other attachments in so like if I wanted to draw a bigger circle gosh I haven't used this in a really long time here we go so if I want to draw a bigger circle I would unscrew and slip this guy in right here and then I could draw like a gigantic circle and I've done that I did that a few years back um, so there's that piece very useful to have this piece is for ink which I've never used um, in here you've got lead and like in all the years I've purchased had this compass 40 years I think I've gone through one piece of lead I mean they just last and last unless you're using it obsessively every day um, honestly I don't know what this piece is for <laughs> And um, it comes with an extra screw, or an extra wheel and an extra screw usually, in case you lose your parts. So let's get on to using this guy. You don't need a pen to put a pencil with it, obviously, because your lead is right here. And those um, extra leads that I showed you, they're really long, and they slip right in. You just unscrew this guy and slide the lead right in. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's draw something with this guy. I like to start by choosing how big I want my circle to be. And so rather than picking a random size, um, you know, opening it to just some random size and drawing a circle, you can do that, lots of people do that. I like to get really particular. Numbers mean something to me, so I will generally, um, place my the tip of the, the the sharp tip at one end of the ruler and I will open it generally to the size circle I want so if I want like a an 8 inch circle of course I'm going to open it to 4 inches so we're getting into our geometry right so that's 4 inches so I can measure it I can see that I'm at four inches, and that's gonna be the circle I'm gonna draw. If I was really setting this up to draw a mandala, I would measure my piece of paper and find the exact center with my ruler, and then that's where I would put the sharp end. So I'm just gonna pick a point, I'm gonna draw a little dot, and that's gonna be where I'm gonna put the point. And here I'm gonna draw an eight inch circle. Do you see how smooth that went around compared to these other silly little compasses. That's why it pays to have a good compass. Okay, so there's our eight inch circle. Now what we're gonna do is draw the flower of life. And you might be thinking, how do I start with that? Well, I will usually start by eyeballing and placing a little dot or a little line at the top of the circle. And that line is lined up with my center line. If you really want to be specific, you can come in here with your ruler and you can try to get all super specific and get it um, perfectly lined up. Like I would just take my, my triangle and I would line it up at the edge of my sheet down here. And I'd come over to the dot in my circle and by my triangle being lined up on the edge and my dot here, I know I'm in exact center. So like that would be the exact center of the circle, All right? So I was just a little bit off. So sometimes I guess it helps to check. I don't mind if things are off. I'm not perfect. And so I like my things to be slightly imperfect. All right, so then there's my dot at the top. That is now where I put the pointy end. And it's really important to have a compass that doesn't move because this distance has to stay exact for the flower of life to come out. So this is the distance that I drew um, this outer circle with. All right, I'll just trace over it again. There we go. And so I wanna make sure that distance stays exactly that, and it will because this this um, wheel won't allow it to move. It's on threads, so it's not going to slip. So I'm going to stick the pointy end at that line I drew at the top, 
and I'm going to go from the center outward both directions. There's my first arc. Now my second line is this line that I made right here. I could either start at this point where the arc crosses the outer edge of the circle or over here. I'm going to start over here. So you want to put your point on that exact crossing point and draw through the center again. Do you see how it went through this point that I started at? Okay, so I'm going to lift. I'm going to go down to the next arc crossing the circle. And do you see how I've already drawn one petal of the six petal flower of life? And then we just keep going all the way around. It's not hard. It's kind of like just a formula. You just, once you figure the formula out, you're like, oh, I got it. There we go. And draw the last one. There we go. So that is the flower of life. You go back in, clean up your lines. that. Any other lines that were in there? And you've got this beautiful little flower of life right here, these petals that you can you can paint, you can do whatever you want with them. Right? Pretty. So um, I'm going to show you some of the flower of lifes that I have done and other mandalas that have been inspired um, from the Flower of Life. So here you're looking at the Flower of Life. We just drew one, and this is one that I have painted all up using all my watercolor paints. And of course, I always love to add in this gold mica paint. I often will rim my mandalas with a rim of gold. I just think it really adds some beautiful decoration. And uh, this one is about the four elements. You can see the, the earth, water, fire, and air. And it's a color wheel. So this would just be a simple exercise that I did uh, just as a demonstration on how to do a color wheel in a mandala. So let's look at some other ones. This one here, you can see, I started with the flower of life. I did a small one because here's the small circle. And so then I used that radius and just drew this little small flower of life. And when you draw the flower of life, you notice how we erased those lines that went outside the initial circle? If you just let those lines keep going, they make a circle. And then the other one makes a circle, and then the other one makes a circle, and a circle. And then you can do all kinds of fun, different paint things in all those circles that it creates. So there's so much that comes off of it. And this is another sort of color wheel um, exercise with some little crystals that I drew and I added some glitter in the crystals and a, like a little DNA helix um, and I really like this one it's fun let's take a look at another one this one is not a flower of life it's five so flower of life is six petals this one is five petals and there's ways to draw the five petal mandala as well this is just an example of fiveness and then this one is four. Oops, it's upside down. So this one you can see it's four petals and four circles and uh, all the things that you can do working in fours. Let's take a look at another one. Oh boy, here, this is uh, the flower of life. Do you see it in the center? Here's this the center one right here with the six petals and if you fall, let your eye follow, there's the next circle, there's the next circle, there's the next circle. I even can get lost sometimes. And you just keep picking your compass up, putting it on the point, and drawing it. Do you see all these pencil lines out here? I just thought they looked so nice, I didn't want to cover them up with anything. And it's a really nice meditative exercise to draw the entire flower of life pattern out in its completion like this. Of course, I added the gold paint. And a little bit of glitter. This was a really nice fun exercise. And then when you start with the flower of life, which is really faint, you can hardly see it in there, 
you draw it all out just like I did in this one but this one I drew all of the connecting geometric lines to make this really beautiful shape and in there is the Metatron's cube um, I haven't painted this one up yet I'm just enjoying the work I put into it and I didn't want to cover it with paint yet <laughs> but I will at some point and then this is an example of a mandala that starts from the center and I mean by that it's not geometric this is stuff that emanates from within you and so for me this was a vision I had of an eagle handing me mala beads um, I'm a yoga teacher as well as an artist and these mala beads to me symbolize um, prayer so this eagle was reminding me to always be in prayer and meditation to get you through whatever you need to get through and then on top of that can you see this flower of life pattern that I sketched so it's just one more way you can use the flower of life in your paintings this is an example of a mandala that blooms from the center so I drew a circle which gave me a point of containment. And then within that circle, I found my center and I drew this beautiful little bluish lavender shape. And then from there, I just started painting out sort of almost seaweed shape blobs, but with this lavender color. And I really love it. And I used, um, again, this silvery mica paint in some of these and around this edge. And it turned out really fun. I, I really enjoy looking at this one. And then here is another example of a mandala that blooms from the middle. So on this one, I didn't draw any lines at all. I just started right in the center and I just started drawing with a pencil these patterns until I just built up this kind of big blooming flowy mandala. And then I painted it with watercolor and then I put colored pencil on top of it. And there's a lot of hours in this one, uh, but it was very meditative and I had so much fun um, really reflecting. I learned a lot when I did this piece. And then here's another one, similar to the one before, blooms in the center. This was very quick and very fast, just watercolor, didn't spend a lot of time, but really enjoyed the color combination. And this is, I think, the last one. This one, again, I drew an outer circle so that I had a containment, and then I just started in the center with a color I love, and then just started blooming out from there. Sort of the green symbolizes grass, this uh, brownish bronze color is the earth and the grounding, then you've got the lavender flames and the fire for warmth, and then again, just this, this uh, rosy violet um, color that I just love so much um, and the blue and the violet and the gold and the green I really love this one I had this on my wall for a really long time just enjoying it I don't know if you can see it shimmering so that is how much fun you can have with mandalas starting with the flower of life I hope this was a fun video and that you learned something and I'll see you on the next one Hi, this is Wendy Nolan. I really hope that you enjoy my video and I thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.